Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I'm in Boring, Oregon to show you the installation of this remote hydraulic kit on a Kubota M6060. Today we're going to be installing this with a bracket included in this for no drill installation up on the front of the tractor. And this kit comes with all the hardware you need, all the hoses, everything to create a remote on your tractor. He's going to be adding a hay conditioner to the back of this tractor, but you can also plug in lots of different implements, including hydraulic top links. Check that out in the link below. You can also include hydraulic side links. I build and sell these as well. Today we're installing it on a Kubota, but I build these kits for New Holland, John Deere, and all the major tractor manufacturers out there. Today we're installing this to the rear of the tractor, but you can also install this exact same kit to the front of the tractor to run a grapple or a post hole digger. Stick around, I'll show you every step needed to install this on your tractor. The first step to install this kit is to put the mounting bracket onto the tractor. We're gonna use these two existing bolts on this LA1154 loader to install this bracket. So I've got 14 millimeter wrenches and I just need to loosen these two bolts. I'm gonna take the bracket and put the larger two holes right onto these bolts on the inside, and then put the nuts and washers right back on there. With the bracket mounted to the tractor, I'm now ready to install the valve onto this bracket. So I'm gonna take the hardware kit and empty it out into a magnetic tray, and I'm gonna be using the washers and the longest bolts. On this tractor, the valve mounts the inside of this bracket. And I'm gonna take one of these long bolts with a washer on it and slide it right through here. Put a lock washer and a nut on the inside and tighten with a half inch wrench. Let's go ahead and install the knob. Take your knob with the lock washer on it, thread it right into the piston. And to get this all the way tight, you'll wanna grab onto this piston and keep turning. But I want you to be careful. You can use vice grips, but not on this area that goes inside the piston. So I like to shove it all the way forward. I can grab just this outer collar, finish tightening, and that's good to go. Now it's time to connect the supply lines to the switching valve from the loader system. Before you disconnect anything, I want you to relieve all the pressure in your loader system by moving your loader valve to all four positions several times. That'll make sure all the quick couplers release cleanly and can connect easily when you're ready to go back. So I'm gonna first work on the front circuit of this remote hydraulic valve. And when I go down here to connect it to my quick couplers, Today we're going to be using the white and the yellow connectors. Those are the lift circuit for this tractor. The red and the blue are the dump circuit, but today we're going to be hooking to the lift circuit. So I can go ahead and disconnect the white one here. And I'm going to go ahead and take it up to plug it into the front circuit of the switching valve. I've got my hose unplugged, but I've got this sleeve here that all these hoses are bound up in, and I'm gonna need to release some tension on that and take this hose out of that. And there's a zip tie here I need to either cut or release, and then I'll be able to move things around in that sleeve. Now I can work things around in this sleeve. I'm going to take the white hose completely out of the sleeve. To identify it, I'm wiggling it, and I can see which one it is up top, so I'm just going to pull that out of this sleeve. Okay, with this coupler rustled out of there, I'm gonna work to make a nice routing of this and 
connected here to the front quick couple. The front is connected to the white coupler. I'm now going to take the front hose coming to the input side of the switching valve and connect it right back to that white coupler down here. Now I'm ready to repeat that for the yellow. This should come out of the sleeve a little easier with one less hose in there. All right, take your time here and work up a neat routing. You can really get a professional looking result. Yellow is gonna slide right into this rear connection of the switching valve. There we go. Now the rear connection to the input side of the valve is gonna go right back to that yellow coupler. We're now ready to run the remote hoses to their final location. Remember, you can't run these to the front of the tractor, but for this installation, we're gonna be running to the rear. So I'm gonna look for a smooth path under this tractor away from things that are hot or things that move or pinch. We've already got a couple hoses running under this tractor, and I'm gonna follow that path neatly and pop up right next to the rear three-point hitch. There we go, those are sitting really neatly. I can zip tie that and really get a good look. And still plenty of room to get on and off the tractor there. I'm gonna bring these hoses to the back of the tractor above the rear axle here. I don't want them underneath to catch on something. So I'm gonna get under the tractor. Okay, we've got the hoses run to the rear of the tractor. Now I'm gonna look for a spot to mount the bracket that is gonna hold these quick couplers. This bracket comes with the kit. It's a breakaway coupler type. That means when you wanna connect it, you just shove the hoses in. I'll show you that later. But this bracket comes with a mounting bar the single hole end goes on the tractor. The W brackets hold the remote couplers. So we want that sticking out from the tractor something like this. This tractor's got a bolt uh, that just holds this piece to the crossbar here that is really easy to take out with a 12 millimeter wrench. I've already got this loosened and it's out. This bolt is just long enough to hold on the body. When I send this out as a production kit, I'm gonna include a longer bolt so that you can put that bracket right up here. Today, I don't have that part with me, so we're gonna drill out this hole, put a longer bolt in, and put the quick couplers right here. Okay, we've got the larger hole now, so I can drop this bolt all the way through, and we'll have threads on the bottom there we go, to connect our mounting bar to. Right here, there's a little gap we need to fill. I've measured that to be about five washers. Actually, it's less than all five washers now. Let's try three washers. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put a washer, a lock washer, and the nut on the bottom. And tighten that with a half inch wrench. With my W brackets pre-assembled, I can get my quick couplers into their final position. I'm gonna route them around these existing hoses. That's where I want them to sit, right there. I've got a little extra hose, but I can uh, make a little coil under the tractor, and that'll be a really nice protected installation. 
So spread out on those W brackets and slide it over the quick coupler. The quick coupler should be held in this bracket with about a quarter inch sticking out the back side and the groove fitting right into that tooth of the bracket. Slide your second one in. Make sure they're evened up and then just finger tighten these bolts so that the couplers can't come loose. Now slide this onto the bracket. If you need to get a little bit of offset, you can put this bracket on the bottom or the top of that mounting bar, but it's really designed to slide right over it. I'm ready to drop in the two bolts from the hardware kit and you've got a lock washer and nut for the bottom. Before you call it quits at the back of your tractor, I want you to test your quick couplers and make sure they're able to couple and release. I've got a hydraulic top link here with the male fitting ready to go. These male fittings come with the kit so you can put them on any implement you've got. But you should be able to just shove to connect, pull to disconnect. Yep, these are working fine. If you have any binding on the hose behind the coupler, you'll need to relieve that um, change your angle or something because the inner sleeve of this coupler does have to be able to slide to connect. That's important. Well, there you have it. The simplest and most affordable way to get a set of remote hydraulics on your tractor. Today on a Kubota, but I build these for all makes and models of tractors. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to help other people find these great videos. Check out my website below and let me know how I can help you with your tractor. All right, let me show you how this kit works. I've got the knob pushed in right now, which means I get totally normal loader function. I have lift function and dump function. Of course, with the engine off, I'm only gonna get things that move down. So when I pull out on the knob and wanna run my hydraulic remote, now my lift function is frozen in place on the tractor and up and down movement on the loader lever is gonna control my top link. Let me start the engine and show you that with the engine on. We'll start with the knob in for totally normal loader function. With my knob in, I can lift, I can dump, I can do all the normal things with my loader. And when I'm ready to activate my remote, pull out on it, and I have control of the hydraulic top link. If I'm done working on the rear, want to go back to my loader, just push in on the loader lever, and I've got complete control again.